Welcome back from commercial. I'm joined in studio now with Lisa Johnson. Thank you for joining us in studio today. Thank you very much for having me. And she is the Assistant Dean for Student Academic Services, and she is currently running for a U.S. Senate seat. And can you tell us a little bit why you were influenced and what made your decision to run for a U.S. Senate seat? Oh, absolutely. I'm a passionate, lifelong Democrat, and I've always been very interested in politics. And I've thought for years about the possibility of running for office one day. And uh, this year was a very interesting year in politics in Kansas because Sam Brownback is, of course, giving up his seat to run for the governor uh, of Kansas, and then also Dennis Moore, who is the U.S. Congressman in the 3rd District, uh, is also retiring as well. And so there are opportunities right now for some fresh faces to get into races. And so when I heard about those two things, I started thinking about the possibility of getting into politics and, and making a career change. And what kind of campaigning have you already started to do this year? Well, this has been going on for several months. My decision process has really started, it started around Thanksgiving, I would say. And I started talking with my husband about the possibility. And I began by talking with some of the party leadership. I had the opportunity to meet with uh, Congressman Moore. And I met with Larry Gates, who's the president of the Kansas Democratic Party, and Kenny Johnston, who's the executive director of the party initially, to let them know that I was potentially interested in running for office. And they were very excited to hear that. Everyone was very supportive and encouraging me. Uh, and one of the things that they suggested that I do is get out around the state and start going to some of the county party meetings and sharing my plan to potentially run for office with them so that I could get some feedback from them about my potential candidacy. And so that's what I began doing earlier in the year. I started up in the Johnson County area where I live and also Wyandotte County. I went to a meeting there as well. And then over spring break, I spent some time in central Kansas and visited with five different county groups out there in McPherson, Salina, Hutchinson, Newton, and Wichita. And everyone was really supportive of the idea of me joining the race. People seem very excited that my background is in education. I really do firmly believe that we need more educators in our political leadership. We have only a mere handful of U.S. senators who have a background in education. And since that's the foundation of everything we do as a country, we need to make sure that people who are in office have knowledge and understanding of education so that when programs and policies are being discussed, then there are folks who can weigh in on those from their own professional experience. Well, it sounds like you've been doing already a lot of campaigning. So what do you have in store next year once you take your leave of absence from Baker University? Well, my leave of absence will begin May 20th. That is my last day on campus. And of course, uh, it becomes a bit of a crunch time leading up to both the August 3rd primary and then the November 2nd election. And so while you're right, I've been doing quite a bit of campaigning thus far. Uh, it's going to ramp up quite a bit over the summer months as I'm competing for the August 3rd primary. So I'm going to continue, obviously, to go around to various locations throughout the state. I'm really going to get to see a lot of Kansas this summer, which I'm excited about. Uh, and then hopefully if I win the primary, then it will ramp up even further as I compete for the November 2nd election. And so there are two, two primary tasks that are very important for any candidate. One is getting out and meeting people and getting visible in the state. And the other is fundraising. That's absolutely critical. So I'm going to be obviously doing a lot of fundraising calling because every candidate has to do that. Well, thank you so much for joining us in the studio and informing us about everything that's going on in your, compa in your campaign. So um, thank you so much, Lisa. And thank now you. we're going to send it to Patrick Murch with Question of the Week. My toughest class right now is Calculus 2. Toughest class would have to be quantitative methods and decision making. Not only is it a tough course, but it's at 8 a.m., which makes it twice as hard. The hardest class would probably be um, Intermediate Accounting 2.
My toughest class is by far business policy with Dr. Jacobson. My toughest class is by far anatomy and physiology too. And my toughest class is microeconomics, only because it's at 8 in the morning, not because business classes are hard. Thanks, Patrick. I'm lucky enough not to have a hard class. Up next, we're going to take a look at a fellow Baker student and her recent accomplishment. Junior Christine Jansen has recently been selected as a Stowers Scholar for this summer at the Stowers Institute in Kansas City, Missouri. Jansen is a biology major and hopes to head to med school after graduation in 2011. It's both an honor and an award, and it's also somewhat like an internship. So I'm, go I'm getting paid a stipend to go and do research with a doctor that has been doing research on a specific um, organism his entire life. So um, it was, it's an honor because it's so prestigious and so competitive, but at the same time, it's, you know, it was, it was, it's more of a job, I would say, than an award or something like that. Janssen's will be researching with assistance from a scientist at the Institute on a daily basis with a specific specimen on the molecular level. She says the opportunity will be valuable for her to gain experience, boost her resume, and still earn money during the summer. To qualify as a Stowers Scholar, one must hold at least a 3.5 GPA, have 60 completed credit hours, and are working for an undergraduate degree in science field. I think it'll be a great experience. I, uh, I want to go to med school, so this is medical research, so it'll help just in my broad knowledge of medicine and research, current research that's going on. But at the same time, there's always the option of going into research after Baker and not going to med school. So if I end up falling in love with it, which I don't know if I will or not, um, there's always that possibility that I could want to go to grad school and then go into research on my own and not even go to med school. So it's just kind of another option for me to consider before I get my path completely set on med school. So. Congratulations to Christine for earning a spot on the Stowers Institute and the best of luck this summer. Stay tuned because we're going to take a quick commercial break for more Orange Line.